After a fantastic week exploring the sites of the Clarence River, including visiting and meeting the owners of the Notorious, a 15th century replica Portuguese trading ship, it was time to exit Iluca and continue our journey southwards to Port Macquarie, 128 nautical miles of downwind sailing on the northerly breezes. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30-foot, 50-year-old sailing boat, Marul. Yeah, unless we want to tack out of here, I think we'll just, <laughs> we'll just motor out along the brake wall. When we run the engine, we generally have our sail hoisted for stability. A little more push and as a safety measure in case of engine failure. Get the sails up instantly to 5.6 knots. Motoring some chumps. How about that for a bar cropping? <laughs> Another one. Ah. This line that Troy is clipping to our boom is called a preventer. It stops the boom being able to sweep across the cockpit dangerously if things go wrong. For this reason, I started calling it the Defender, and the name has kind of stuck on board Marul. Time to put the Defender out now. Prevena. <laughs> sort of losing our wind as the sun's going down at the moment. It's a little bit annoying, only because um, you know, once we lose power, we lose speed, and that means we lose a bit of stability. So we're having a little bit of a wallow around. That's okay, you know. Like it'll back and strengthen through the night. At the moment, we're running wing on wing, um, and it's going not too bad. We were making um, six and a half, seven knots, and we were seeing eight knots before, um, but we've, we've chilled out a little bit now. Six point six. So I suspect that we're getting a bit of help from the East Australian current. That's always welcome. Um, but yeah, as the wind strengthens through the night and we're able to come over on a starboard tack, things should be a little bit better. As evening approaches, we normally bring in the fishing gear. You've been experimenting. Yeah, no, I've done an experiment in the pressure cooker. What is it? I'm hoping it's going to be brown rice risotto. <laughs> <laughs> I basically just chucked all these ingredients in and put water in. One cup of brown rice, three cups of water, a tablespoon of beef bone broth powder, a cup of dried mushrooms, half a cup of onion flakes and garlic flakes. We'll see you, how it goes. <laughs> what are you doing down there on the floor? It's the least um, spot m amount of movement down here. It's always the most comfy spot on the boat, isn't it? It's really La good. Laying around on the floor. 
I got um I got a bit seasick when we left after we did our Q and A chat, so I came and lay down here for half an hour and then I felt better. <laughs> Pretty good. People ask us that all the time. Do you get yeah. seasick? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it smells good. So I put those dried mushrooms in it mm. and beef bone broth. Mm. I reckon it'll be good. I'm hoping it'll be good. It's an art to turning it down so it doesn't go out. The old method. I would have it gimbaled, but it's too bangy because we're rolling around. And we're going back and forward a lot, aren't we? Yeah, I just left it. No hey, gimbal. Hey, gimbal. These are the dried mushrooms that I used with the brown rice to make the risotto that's in the fresh cooker. This was such a score. We found this at like. Um, what, what do you call it? We found it in Harvey Bay at the... Uh, bulk Foods. Bulk Foods. Pretty good. I think it's like 30 bucks, but there's a lot of mushrooms in here. <laughs> it's a lot of meals. Three and a half knots. So we've had to we've had to put a reef in um, one reef in Marul's mainsail and reef the headsail just to slow down a bit. <laughs> it's not a point of getting the yacht to go as fast as we can because we were do what what were you doing before? Pasky was eight nine knots or something. We got yeah, the last east night. we got the east Australian current. We were we were busting down the waves as well. So we've got here a bit early and now we've got to try and kill some time but I don't really feel like heaving too. This is a more comfortable motion so we're fully reefed and we've managed to slow down to about three and a half knots in, I don't know, what do you reckon, eight, nine knots of breeze? Yeah. Like. We had to slow down so that we would enter the river mouth during the last quarter of the rising tide. That helps to give the smoothest ride over the entrance bar while still enjoying the help of the tide into port. You can hear the roar of the surf, eh? So we've roared down the coast. Mm -hmm. We came here pretty quick. Again, as we've been coming down the New South Wales coast, we've got the East Australian current and we've got the wind up our bums. Yeah, well, we've been able to sit and wait for the northerlies to come, so we've been able to sail downwind, which is yep. pretty cool. It's been really great. So we pulled in here at Port Macquarie um, and we're just going to go and have a look around because even where there's people, I'm sure we can find. A few critters getting around in civilization. <laughs> Here we have the pelican. By all accounts, his beak can hold more than his belly can. Elsewhere in Port Macquarie, we find the striated heron. He is as successful a fisherman as any you would find anywhere. Like all good fishermen, he's the very picture of patience and cunning. But what's this? It looks like our heron has attracted the attention of the anti-fishing lobby. The 
Negotiations are fierce and brought almost to a standstill. But in the end, it looks like the lobbyists have won the day. Even the local cafe provided some excellent wildlife viewing. In this case, some eastern water dragons joined us for lunch. But it wasn't just dining with dragons. Most businesses on the water have a no fishing policy and the local brim know it. It was pretty funny watching these pelicans get their hopes up as Troy was putting rubbish in the bin. These pied oyster catches have been a feature throughout remote Australia and it was strange seeing them here so comfortable in civilisation. Another bird we commonly see is the osprey, Australia's largest hawk. They will build these large nests on the communication and power transmission towers, but because of their protected status, these nests are never removed. Many of the wading birds that call in here migrate as far as Siberia in the north, while others come from Africa. These migration patterns have spurred a lot of wetland conservation in Australia. The extensive sandbars in Port Macquarie mean that mooring space is at a premium. With strong and unfavourable winds forecast over the coming days, we decided to explore a little more of Port Macquarie. A wander along the break wall revealed to us a different kind of rock art. Merry Christmas everyone, everyone that's a new subscriber, old subscriber, everyone that's joined us for the adventure, Merry Christmas. And a special Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to those of you that are our patrons um, that have supported us along the way this year. We've yep. really tried to up our game yep. with our filming quality and put better productions out for you every week. So. Yeah, I hope you've noticed, but um, it is, it's just important to know that we, we couldn't have done it without you. Yes. So um, thank you very much for this last year. 
and we look forward to you know like welcoming everyone into 2020 and i hope it's great for you and your families yes we're currently off en route to tasmania so you've got tasmania <laughs> to look forward to next year we're off to the southern ocean that, yeah that's what's happening uh, yeah <laughs> that's what's happening for free range sailing but uh yeah i hope you've in enjoyed everything that we have done we hope to keep enjoying everything that we will do yeah merry christmas merry christmas